Ecuador for many, many years had been ruled by pro-U.S. dictators, often relatively brutal. Then it was decided that they were going to have a truly democratic election. Jaime Roldos ran for office, and his main goal, he said, as president would be to make sure that Ecuador's resources were used to help the people. And he won, overwhelming, by more votes than anybody had ever won anything in Ecuador. And he began to implement these policies to make sure that the profits from oil went to help the people. Well, we didn't like that in the United States. I was sent down as one of several economic hitmen to change Roldos, to corrupt him, to bring him around, to let him know, you know, okay, you know, you can get very rich, you and your family, if you if you play our game, but if you just, if you continue to try to keep these policies you've promised, uh, you, you're going to go. He wouldn't listen. He was assassinated. As soon as the plane crashed, the whole area was cordoned off. The only people allowed in were U.S. military from a, from a nearby base and some of the Ecuadorian military. When an investigation was launched, two of the key witnesses died in car accidents before they had a, a chance to testify. A lot of very, very strange things that went on around the, the assassination of Jaime Roldos. I, like most people who've really looked at this case, have absolutely no doubt that it was an assassination. And of course, in my position as an economic hitman, I was always expecting something to happen to Jaime, whether it be a coup or assassination, I wasn't sure, but that he would be taken down because he was not being corrupted. He would not allow himself to be corrupted the way we wanted to corrupt him.